They say size isn't everything, except when it comes to two new smartphone cameras with more pixels per shot than we've ever seen before. First up, the Nokia Lumia 1020 that sports a massive 41 megapixel camera. The advantage of having so many pixels, says Nokia, is not so we can print cathedral-sized posters, but to let you zoom in three times without the loss of image quality, and 25 times once the shot's taken. It's created a new way to easily take manual control too, from shifting focus to adjusting white balance and ISO, just like a DSLR. Which is when I spied Toby and Stefan shooting the fountain using a long shutter speed. That's a new feature on the Nokia, so I joined them. To help keep my three second shot steady, the 1020 has five tiny motors inside, making 50 adjustments a second. But it was a slight problem. Mm. And I've just got a white frame. Clearly, the image that I'm trying to take is simply too bright for a long shutter speed, and I don't have control over the aperture. Digital SLRs, one up. Now, this monster only sports a paltry 20 megapixel sensor, but it's got a few tricks up its sleeve as well. Together with the Z1, Sony has released two new clip-on lenses. The QX10 pairs with the handset when you touch the NFC symbols on each device together. So now I look like a proper photographer. The lens offers 10 times optical zoom and has its own dedicated shutter and zoom controls. Cleverly, it saves on the handset's storage space by popping a big 18 megapixel image onto its own SD card, sending a smaller 2 megapixel version to the phone for sharing. Because the lens is essentially a camera in itself, we only use the phone to see what it can see, so we can move the lens up to 10 metres away from the handset and use the Wi-Fi connection to get some really interesting angles. Even on its own, the Z1 seems as good as a compact, with some natty features, when the software behaves itself. In time burst mode, from the moment you start the camera, the sensor begins saving images. Now, I started taking the shot here, but the camera's already working a second before, so if I prefer a shot there, I can take it, or maybe one towards the end. The camera also identifies movement before the shot's taken to set the shutter at a faster speed for what it claims are blurless images. And that's the result. I don't think he's happy. At the end of the day, both cameras manage to do a pretty good job. The Z1 on the left lets in more light with its wide f2 aperture, while the Nokia on the right merges information from seven pixels to create one, resulting in a smaller but brighter, more colourful low-light image. It's not all about the number of pixels, say Sony and Nokia, but they're certainly helping to redefine what a smartphone camera can now do.